Ahoy hoy! You've probably heard of the Global Occult Coalition, a shadowy intergovernmental organization run by the UN whose sole purpose is to destroy every anomalous object in the entire world. Or maybe you've heard of them and you kind of like their tactical strategies and tech. And you think maybe they're not as bad as they're made out to be. Maybe the Foundation is lying to us all. Maybe they're the good guys. The truth is probably somewhere in between the two. So let's talk for just a moment why you're probably wrong about the Global Occult Coalition. A lot of conspiracy theories in the United States about uh, like how the UN is going to come over to the US, take over everything, and force their rules down our throat or whatever. It's really pretty funny as a conspiracy theory goes. The thing is, the GOC is sort of that concept made real. Um, let's take a look at their mission statement on the uh, GOC hub. Our mission, to keep the peace and maintain friendly relations between occult organizations, to protect humanity against all threats, paranormal, parascientific, and paratemporal, and take any actions required to ensure the survival of the human race. Now, this is written exactly like a uh, UN resolution, actually, which I only know because I play a game called Nation States, and this is exactly what they look like. You get your preamble, and then you get your GOC charter resolved that in the early years of the 20th century, the rising emergence of hostile, paranormal, parascientific, and paratemporal entities constitutes a clear and present threat to the survival of humankind. Resolved that in the wake of the Second World War and the concurrent Seventh Occult War, that no single nation can be relied upon to effectively respond to parrot threats due to concerns of nationalism and international conflict. Resolved that the necessity of responding to said parrot threats is of utmost importance and must, by necessity, supersede any concerns of national, regional, or cultural self interest. Therefore, we, the undersigned leaders of 108 major paranormal organizations authorize the formation of an international organization dedicated to keeping the peace and identifying, neutralizing, and containing said para-threats, being the highest authority in such matters, superseding all national, international, and otherwise corporeal interests. Be it further resolved that this global occult coalition shall be placed under the independent aegis of the United Nations, and that such an organization shall be provided with whatever resources necessary in perpetua, and that said organization shall be given the authority to use any means necessary to maintain the peace, or should peace be impossible, to ensure the survival of mankind. Signed, Signatures Redacted. Fair enough. <laughs> so they have a five-fold mission, apparently. Uh, survival, which is a survival of the human race. I'm not going to read this uh, word for word here, but survival, survival of the human race, concealment, concealment from the public of the idea of the paranormal, protection, and it actually lists like, although considered expendable if necessary in the pursuit of the first mission. So <laughs> individual human beings, including the operatives of the actual organization, are supposed to be protected only when it doesn't interfere with the survival of the human race. Which makes sense. Fourth mission, destruction. As the existence of para-threats is itself anathema to the survival of the human race, no unnecessary risks are to be taken to ensure the survival of para-threats. Important note there. Fifth mission, education. The Global Occult Coalition shall make every effort to expand the base of knowledge regarding para-threats. So, what you're dealing with is an organization that is... Um, in a way, when it was written, was defined sort of directly in opposition to the SCP Foundation. Now, we've talked about the chaos insurgency before on this channel. And one thing I mentioned when I talk about it is that the chaos insurgency was always defined as the foil to the Foundation, but never really worked perfectly. The chaos insurgency was always the SCP Foundation, but more evil. The GOC, on the other hand, is the SCP Foundation if they didn't care about containing anything. If the only purpose that they had was to protect mankind from, uh, as they called, para-threats, but we would, we would consider them to just be anomalies. But there's certain things you have to understand about their mission here. The destruction section, which it's odd that they would actually call it destruction. It feels like there would be some sort of a euphemism here for 
an intergovernmental organization. But the important note here is that it says no unnecessary risks should be taken to ensure the survival of parrot threats. Now that line is specifically uh, alignment to oppose the SCP Foundation's ethics of taking what they consider unnecessary risks to preserve an anomaly. The problem is, is that the SCP Foundation's not really taking unnecessary uh, risks most of the time. And this has led to a couple of instances where the GOC has basically said, fuck it, we're just gonna blow it up. And there are two very important articles that are basically formative to anyone's understanding of the GOC. And one of them is SCP-1609. SCP-1609 is one of those ones that's like very clearly the GOC fucked something up, but it's possible that they learned from their mistake here and didn't do it again. Just because somebody does a thing or says a thing doesn't mean they haven't learned from their lesson. Of course, 1609 is an incredibly blunt uh, anvil to drop. <laughs> I mean, I know that some lessons have to be made, but it doesn't feel like it's like the kind of, it's not very subtle. It literally has an end note that says, see, the GOC is wrong for doing it their way. <laughs> 1609 was originally a chair that when it detected that you needed a place to sit down would teleport behind you. That's it. Uh, the GOC decided that it was, I guess, dangerous and decided to put it through essentially a wood chipper. Yeah, uh, and the chair was not happy with that. So now it just teleports into people's lungs to kill them. Uh, so they turned a non-threatening object into a threatening object by destroying it. Which is fine. It's a nice little, it's a nice little twist, you know, but as I said earlier, the biggest problem I have with it, of course, is that it's kind of obvious. There's no, what's the word? As I said earlier, there's no subtlety to it. It doesn't, it doesn't like let you come to that conclusion. It tells you directly. In fact, let's read down here and it might even mention it. Yeah, yeah, here we go. The last line, or the last paragraph. This is why we have special containment procedures instead of special destruction procedures. If you break something, it's broken forever. When you try to distort, when you try to destroy an anomaly, you can't take back your mistakes. That's what SCP-1609 has to tell us. This is why we're right and the GOC is wrong, people. A little obvious. A little bit less obvious is 1522, which is another one which will be commonly brought up um, when talking about the GOC, because they also needlessly destroy something. Uh, in this case, it's just a couple of fishing trawlers that are apparently sentient and in love, and that's it. And the GOC solution is to blow them up with missiles. <laughs> uh, and this is important to remember, by the way, and I'll add this is kind of a close to a, a conclusion for this. And this article here is meant to tug on the heartstrings. That's literally the purpose of it. And there's really only just a single solitary mention of the GOC towards the end, but it, and it does a little bit better of a job of making it subtle. But the important part is two, the important thing to remember here are two things. First of all, the GOC destroys them because they don't know what they are, and they don't know that the SCP Foundation has them under control. Two, you have to realize that the SCP Foundation and the GOC are not synchronous they don't work together more often than not. They are not enemies actively, and they have worked together when necessary, but they are not allies. And so the SCP Foundation spends a lot of time, I mean, especially in the way that their viewpoint, uh, their views of the GOC, and in fact, from the old article that I just read you that's the bottom paragraph of, they do not see the GOC as correct, and they see it as something of a, uh, of a moral and ethical and uh, philosophical difference. And so the portrayal of the GOC in the articles is skewed. Though there is one thing to say about that. Just because you know that there's a bias in a thing doesn't mean that thing is invalid. A bias is something you have to take into account, but that doesn't mean the opposite of the thing said is true. It just means that the thing is being said with a certain amount of bias to it and you have to examine it a bit more closely. A lot of people make that mistake. It's all black and white to most people. Things are either true or a lie. Sometimes things are true and a lie a little mushed together. 
And when we're talking about conspiratorial fiction, which is essentially what uh, all of this is, is like, there's a little bit of lie and a little bit of truth combined together to make a good story. And I really do believe that the GOC, as portrayed on the SCP Wiki, is probably an unfair portrayal. But at the same time, to be fair, the GOC is portrayed about as evenly as it can be, given the situation that it's in. But at the same time, the GOC does quite a lot that is uh, morally repugnant because they believe that it is going to protect mankind. They hold them... This is the, this is the really important part. This is the important part to recall. The GOC is all about protecting mankind from paranormal threats. From anomalies. But the problem with considering all paranormal threats to be threats to humanity, which maybe they don't, maybe they've learned their lessons from previous incidents, is that it means you're separating humanity out. And that's the thing that if you read enough SCP articles you begin to understand. The paranormal is not separate from humanity. There's not the paranormal and humanity. There's just the universe that you live in. And some humans are paranormal, and some humans aren't paranormal. And sometimes anomalies serve humanity, and sometimes they don't. Understanding that distinction is incredibly important. And just like in real life, there are no broad strokes. But the GOC, as written, acts as though there are. The GOC as it's classically portrayed and classically understood by the off-site fan base and by some established authors, is as a cartoon villain. The extremist, the lawful stupid paladins. But they don't have to be. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to get some of my merch, there's a carousel beneath this video. I'm wearing the hoodie. You can't... You're wrong about this hoodie. There's this. The you're wrong about this poster poster. I've got t-shirts. I've got a mug on the way. Uh, not for me. It's actually a gift for somebody else. But I've got a mug on the way. I'm gonna, show, I'm gonna have it on camera though. I'm gonna show it off before I give it away. And make sure while you're down there you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. It's very important that you subscribe. More subscribers means I can do more things. And finally, you can head on over to patreon.com forward slash DeSamirian like everybody here on the screen already has. It's an immense help to me to be able to know that even if the, as, uh, even if the SCP wiki outlaws me advertising or does something silly like that or YouTube decides they want to make it so that I can't advertise anymore or decides that I'm not appropriate and that it's, uh, no, no one wants to run ads on SCP content, get off our platform. That I will still have my Patreon backers. You guys are the lifeblood of the channel. I appreciate it so much and I want to make sure and read out probably not a wizard and definitely not a scientist's name and Manuel Noltorp, both of which were pledged at $40. Uh, if you pledge at $30 or $40, you get your name read on video. Thank you for letting me know that I'm not alone out here. And neither are you. I'll see you all again on Thursday.